Hey everybody, Brian here. Welcome to the fast tutorial of all the interior buttons and options on the 2022 Toyota CHR XLE. In this video, we're going to go over every button left to right, including the safety features, and I'm going to keep the pace pretty quick so that we can cover everything. Use the space bar on your keyboard or the pause button or even the settings to change the speed of the video if I'm going a little too fast. Let's get started. So on all CHRs, I have auto down windows all around and auto up. So with a hard push and release or a hard pull and release, I can just let go and the windows will open or close themselves. The window lock is here with an LED to confirm that it's locked. And then I have the door locks here. There's two little nubbies on the lock button so that I know without looking that I'm pressing the lock button. I also have the mirror folding here, so if I press that down, the mirrors will fold. If I put it in the middle, it'll be automatic. My mirror adjustment is left toggler, right toggler, or neutral. Below the dashboard, I have the lever to pop the hood. Above those, I have the brightness for the gauges and buttons on the interior at nighttime, and I have a push button to pop the locking gas cap on the driver's side. Here I have a button that will activate the auto high beams, so that if the headlights are on the auto feature and I push the stock forward, the high beams will be automatic. The steering wheel is telescoping by pulling down this lever. I can pull the steering wheel forward and back and I can raise it or lower it and lock it back into place. Back to the headlight stock, I have the DRL off position for no daytime running lights, automatic parking lights, and manual headlights. If I leave in auto, the car will actually sense when it's dark out and put the headlights and taillights on for me and also give me daytime running lights during the day. On the right side of the steering wheel, I have different settings for my wipers. If I click it down once, I have intermittent, and I can change how often the intermittency goes. Click down again for low, click down three times for high. This section is for the rear wiper. If I turn this forward once, I'll go to intermittent, which is once in a while for the rear wiper, with no adjustment for the intermittency level. And if I click it forward again, I'll go to on, which is just a simple back and forth for the rear wiper. These arrows symbolize pulling towards me to wash the front windshield or pushing away to wash the back windshield. On the bottom right of the steering wheel, I have the stock for the cruise control. So when I push this button in, the display in the middle will say radar ready, and then I push this down to set it. It'll show the speed on the MID that I have it set to, and I can increase the speed or decrease the speed here. To change the following distance on the automatic cruise control, I press this button to bounce between three different safety distance following, uh, following distances, and to cancel, I can turn off the radar or push the brake. Onto the left side of the steering wheel, I have increase and decrease for the volume. I also have seek and track for my songs. I can answer and hang up phone calls when connected to Bluetooth or Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and voice commands. If I push the button short once, it'll be the Toyota infotainment system guiding me through the voice commands. But if I push and hold the button down for three seconds, the Siri orb will pop up when I'm connected to Apple CarPlay and I can talk to Siri. On the right side of the steering wheel is where I can go through my trip and odometer. If I push the trip button, you'll see on the bottom of the MID, I can go through trip A and B, press and hold to clear, back to odometer, press and hold to clear, and back to odometer, like so. The back button select and arrows all operate the MID, which stands for multi-information display. So by using the arrows, I can go side to side through different menus or up and down through the different pages on that menu. And then down below, I have the distance following, like I mentioned, on the cruise control and my lane departure alert. When I'm in lane departure alert and the cruise control system, I have lane trace assist, which will actually guide the car to stay in the center of the lane. The speedo cluster is an easy reader with my engine temperature on the bottom left, my RPMs on the left side, my analog speed on the right, and my fuel level on the bottom right. There's a little arrow here to show me if I forget what side my gas cap is on. The MID is in the center, that stands for multi-information display, and at a glance I can see the time, the outside temperature, my digital speed, my range, what gear I'm in, and my total miles. You can actually change what the MID shows by using these buttons here. So by using the side-to-side -side arrows, I'll actually bounce through the different menus that it has. So starting from the left, I have the vehicle information menu, and I can use the up and down arrows to see different information about the vehicle's gas economy and the trip that I'm on. This actually has a G-force monitor here to see when I'm taking the turns how much G I'm putting on the car and the overall body roll. 
most people like this screen. If I go over to the right, this shows me what my safety sense system is doing when it's active. This is the warning menu that will stay lit up orange if there's actually a message that the car is trying to tell me. And here's the settings where I can do different drive modes, vehicle settings, and meter settings. I'm selecting by using the select and going back by using the back button. So like I showed in the first video on the CHR where we drove it, I can select drive mode and I can go to the different drive modes here. Buttons by the shifter. So I have a button here with a P that lights up. I don't have to push that button. When I put it into drive, it releases. And when I put it back into park, it re-engages. I know the parking brake is on because it says park over here in red. So I don't even have to look down. When I'm buckled up, I have a brake hold feature, which will actually let me come to a stop, but stay in drive. And then I just give it a little bit of gas and the parking brake will release. So that's a quick thing for city driving and the drive through that you'll appreciate. And I have a dedicated button to turn off the traction control, which will re-engage when you turn the car off and turn it back on. A great scenario where you might want to turn off the track control is if you parked and you got a lot of snow and you're having a hard time getting it out of its parking spot and you want full power to the wheels, you'd want to turn off the track control. Onto the shifter with an overhand grip, I can slide it over to the M for manual mode and I can shift down or up like so and it'll show me on the screen. On the MID on the bottom there, you see M1. That'll change as I'm driving. Back to drive, over to park, and within seconds, the parking brake engages. Underneath, like mentioned, I have the USB plug here for the Apple CarPlay or the Android Auto with some storage. And the glove box is not a pull lever, it's actually a push. The climate control on the XLE is actually a dual zone, so I can have two different temperatures here on each side, or I can synchronize them. And then once synchronized, I can control the whole car from the driver's lever. As we get closer, you'll see the lever for each mode is right next to its symbol on the screen. So my fan speed is next to its lever, my air direction is next to its lever, and even the air temperature is right next to its lever, so it's very easy to get to know this climate control system. Pro tip, when you need the AC to be cold, use AC and recirculate together. If I want to save a little gas mileage, I can use Eco Heat and Cool, which will be a little bit more modest. When I use the buttons here to go into my Eco mode, which is in my settings, it should automatically put me into Eco Heat and Cool. I can turn the system off like so. I can resume it by pushing the fan button. And I have my front and rear defrost or auto like my home's uh, climate control system. Say you have central air. Hazards are right in the middle, which is easy to see and get to. And all four of my vents actually have a little wheel where I can customize the amount of ventilation I get. So say I only want half ventilation and I want a certain temperature. It gives you full customizing for your comfort. Up top, I have a simple flip switch for the rear view mirror. It's not auto dimming. And I have the safety connect button here, which you want to get registered if you bought the car brand new or consider paying the subscription if you bought it pre-owned because this could save your life. If you get in an accident and the airbags go off, it'll actually send the EMS to your location and they give you the option to call for help from the button. And I have the individual controls for my lights here or I can have them come on with the door. I also have a separate sliding plastic piece for the sun visor with an activating light on both sides for the mirrors. On the bezel of the screen, I'll have four buttons and a scroller with another four buttons and a scroller. I have home, menu, audio, map. Then I have seek and track, phone, and apps. This is the push button for the power of the radio or the volume, and this is tuning through the stations. The home screen here, which we can tell we're in because it says home in the corner, I can actually edit in my settings, but the home screen is a great place to see different information all at once. To change how the home screen looks, I can go to the menu here, and I can go to setup, and I can go to customize home screen, and this is where you can change the way your home screen looks. The menu is also a great place to access other information about the car too, like my fuel economy and eco history. I can get to my audio system, phone, so everything is interwebbed. So there's, only, there's not only one spot to access things. But setup is an important place that you'll spend time because this is where you can change the time right here for your clock. You can change your language, customize your home screen, change the color theme, which is nice. And if you go down, I can check for software updates. There are some advanced settings that you may not use, but on the left here, there are some things you might like, like on the voice. I can actually train the car to recognize my voice. If I go down to vehicle settings, I can customize the door locks so that when I put it in park, 
the door stay locked instead of unlocking. I can also change the auto relock. I can change what the smart key does when I press the door handle, which I mentioned in the first video. I can even change the tone level of the unlock and lock. For the light settings, I should have hit the back button. I can customize how long the interior lights stay on, how long the headlights stay on as a courtesy when I shut the car off, etc., and the auto headlight sensitivity level. So it gets pretty advanced. Back to menu. An important thing for nighttime or early drivers, if I hit display and screen off, that goes black, and I can enjoy my dark drives without that bright screen in my face. And like I mentioned, you can adjust the brightness to the gauges and buttons right there on that little wheel. Push any button to resume the screen. Also on display, I can change the contrast and brightness to the camera and the screen right there. Of course, I can start my Wi-Fi trial. I can connect a phone right here. So like I mentioned, everything is interwebbed. I can even connect the phone for the first time by pushing this button or pushing the phone button. And once the phone is connected to Bluetooth, I can start a call with this. I can access the phone menu here, or I can do it if I'm in here, which is nice. For audio, which I can't show you any music because of copyright reasons, you have your complimentary series radio. If I'm connected to Bluetooth or I want to, I can go right here and you can change your source on the fly. No more CD players, by the way. I can even reorder these buttons. Map, it does not come with integrated navigation because we're kind of moving the way of smartphones. So when plugged into the bottom, it's not wireless Apple CarPlay, so when I'm plugged in, I can put Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, whatever I like to use, and by pushing Map when I'm connected, it'll show it right here. And like mentioned, seek and track for the radio, phone, which will access my phone menu when I'm connected, and apps, which is where I can do my remote connect authorization and set up my Wi-Fi and get some notifications. Pretty simple stuff. We've moved away from the Entune system which if you used Entune in the past, share below what you thought of that. And that's the basics of our screen. Like I mentioned, in setup, there are some advanced settings. I'm not gonna cover these advanced settings because 99% of people are not gonna use those, but general is where you're going to change most of your basic stuff. And like I mentioned, these buttons on the sides, when you push them, it just goes to that menu. I can change some audio settings here. That's where I can train it to recognize my voice. And like I mentioned, vehicle, just to summarize, I can customize here. So that is the fast button tutorial of the 2022 CHR XLE. Great car. It's a great thing to consider if you're looking between a Corolla and a Camry. It's a little higher off the ground. I hope the video helped. If there's something I somehow missed or you need some details on, let me know. With the smart key system, it's very easy to lock the car. All I do is get out. And the key can be in my pocket. Just put my thumbs right here. And the mirrors fold in. To unlock it, the mirrors fold out. And at nighttime, I have a little puddle light right here, which is nice. It'll say see you on the ground. If I put the key in here, or I even hit the lock button on the door, and I try to lock it, it refuses to lock. You hear that? And on the inside, It'll say key detected in vehicle on that middle screen there, the MID. So that's it, guys. Let me know what you think. I hope it helped. Like I said, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you to my supporters for your patience. Peace.